This is the Zaki project. What means from within the earth, or that which comes from the earth. And it's pollination protection work. And it's like this, like the study of like protecting bees and butterflies that pollinate any animal that pollinates. And there's like mechanical pollination, biological pollination, indirect pollination, and direct pollination. How about one thing uh, around the circle, just to uh, very quickly, one thing they've learned from the project, something they've picked up from either our field trips or something they've learned in the library and our research. Either about butterflies, pollinators, bees, milkweed. milkweed. There are 4,000 species of bees. Really? See how we learned something. Butterflies lay their eggs on milkweed. Monarchs. It's absolutely correct. Okay, bee colonies are just dying out. No one knows why. Studying for that. I learned about horsetail, how you can use them as knee braces. That milkweed is what modern birds like to play their eggs off. I learned this life cycle of the modern birds that. I, I heard here that milkweed wasn't poisonous, that it was toxic. Yes. Um, could you expand on that a little bit? I, I could. Go ahead. Um, poisonous is like where if you eat it, like it could kill you, but toxin, like if, if it's like toxic or whatever, it's like you could just, it, it doesn't kill you, but it could make you sick if you eat large quantities of it. So. So have you uh, looked at any research, Does um, could milkweed kill smaller animals? Milkweed can kill other, like, other insects or anything that, like, because if a monarch butterfly lays its eggs and, like, some bug or something tries to come and eat it, like, it, it'll die because of Okay, so it's toxin. actually been as poisonous to, yeah. to other insects. Yeah. And I, because I've heard about birds getting sick when they eat. Uh, butterflies, because the butterflies ingest that substance and then they themselves become toxic or poisonous, and I, I'm not yeah. sure which word to use, but um, probably toxic, because yeah. I've seen I've seen film of blue jays, they've done a, a research project, and the, the blue jays have eaten the monarch butterflies, and then they, they get sick, they grow up, so it's toxic to them, so that's why they don't eat the monarch. So o over time, um, birds have learned not not to eat the, the uh, monarchs because um, they get sick. There are a couple of birds in Mexico that actually don't get sick and do eat them. Um, what would be the difference between um, camouflage and mimicry? Oh, I got this. I've heard from you. I want to hear from you. Camouflage is like blending in with your surroundings, and mimicry is like being seen but looking more intimidating and scarier, so they don't mess with you. So, so there's another butterfly that uh, mimics the monarch and that birds leave alone, but it's an actually <coughs> toxic. It looks just a whole lot like the monarch. It's orange remember. and black. It's called a viceroy. Yeah. You actually have an example of a viceroy. This one's a viceroy. That is a viceroy. That's a viceroy. That's not bad. It doesn't say monarch there, but that is a viceroy because of the pattern on the wings. Yeah, look at the pattern on the wings on this one. Can you see the cells on the bottom wings on this? Yeah. You know? And then look at look at the, the the half circle line on the bottom wings. That's how you can tell the difference. You know that's a vice ring when you see that pattern. Now look look at those bottom wings, and then look at the bottom wings of the vice ring. Can you see that difference? Yeah, you know, they're like actual cell, irregular cells, where these, these are you know, more of a regular shape. Um, there's one more thing about the wings that I want to tell you, and it says so there. You can tell just by looking at that butterfly, whether it's a male or a female. Can you locate the black dot on the male's? lower wing on, on the monarch. 
See that black dot down there? Yeah. Sometimes they, you don't know what, what it is. It's a male. It's real easy to spot out in the field. You can get up close enough to see them with their wings are open. The female has a little darker lines too than the looks male. Looks like the male's top but wings are long. But you can't tell unless they're one that's right next to the other. The best way is to look for that dot on the bottom. Susan's been with us uh, two years on the project, and she comes and works with the kids, uh, talking about the mystery of the monarch butterfly, okay, which is one of our key pollinators. Okay. Yes, I had the privilege of spending an hour with these young people this year, and uh, we shared a lot of information. I ended by reading a children's story, hoping, hoping that I... Uh, uh, telling them I didn't really believe they were children, but it was a, one of my favorite stories. Uh, it's a poem that Lois Ellert wrote. You may be familiar with her in her wonderful cut paper illustrations. It's called Waiting for Wings. Out in the field, eggs are hidden from view. Clinging to leaves with butterfly glue. Soon caterpillars hatch, they creep and they chew. Each one knows what it must do. Find a place where winds don't blow. Then make a case in which to grow. Caterpillar changes now begin. Body and wings take shape within. When it's time, each case is torn. Wings unfold, new butterflies are born. Get ready to fly. Then hungry butterflies head to the sky, looking for flowers with nectar to eat. They catch a whiff of something sweet. They follow that fragrant scent of perfume. Until they find our garden in bloom. We've been waiting for wings. We watch them circle, land on their feet. Unroll their tongues and begin to eat. They dip and sip. Then fly away back home to the fields. They have eggs to lay. This project, the Zadki project, is to protect pollinators, and they're actually threatening our ecosystem. 
we happen to be in a migration path here of the monarch butterflies. A lot of people don't know that. And they fly 2,000 miles next month. They're going to start flying in August down into Mexico. They ride the thermal winds, 18 inches off the ground, 2,000 feet in the air. That's a, over 2,000 miles they fly. And uh, one of our dreams is to have some of these young people travel and follow them one day into Mexico.